Sophie, welcome to Pop Turner. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. You know, it's interesting because, you know, one of my favorite things about content these days is genre bending. And I feel like with this film, you kind of have that right when you're watching the first kind of five, ten minutes of it. There's so many kind of things going on. You wrote this, you directed this. Was genre bending on your mind with this or do you feel like it just kind of happened? Oh, genre bending is is exactly <laughs> what I wanted to do. Uh, <laughs> types of films so yes from the from that from the get-go uh the genre bend was was an essential part of the the creative process and always towing the line between dark comedy and thriller was essential a hundred percent and i find it interesting because you know the, it, the like the who done it murder mystery and everything that's always been around but i feel like there has been this kind of surge of popularity with that type of content with the kind of true crime podcast boom and everything so what is it like kind of working on a movie at a time where there is such an appetite for that content i'm curious about that i mean i i i think it's incredibly topical you yeah. know and you know, it's it. The timing is great because you you want to make something that sort of speaks to a universal desire, um, and and yeah, I think that you know this is a cautionary tale of someone. Uh, you know, you're watching someone who who is a, a true crime podcaster and she sort of gets swept up in this, this world, but you know, it, it examines this, our society's like fixation with Insta celebrity and how, you know, someone, how far someone uh, could or would go to get an audience, which I think is a very uh, universal um, thing, but also very scary. And to kind of add to that, because I do find it really fascinating that you wrote this and you directed this because the mindset is going to be, it's a creative, it's storytelling at the end of the day, but the mindset of actually putting these on, in, like, on a script and then kind of putting it on screen are going to be a bit different. There's going to be maybe some things on screen script that don't like that change on screen and everything. But like, I mean, at the end of the day, I want to know when you're like, when are you conscious of the type of audience you want to watch this movie? Is it when you're writing it or is it when you're actually going to film it? Because you, you're a detective watching this movie. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I so I storyboard everything that I do because I think it's really important. I think it it helps with communication. Um, you know, I think it's really important, especially with a movie like this that toes this line between um, satire and, and thriller, um, that everyone, whether it be your, you know, any, any collaborator, whether it be your producer, your cast, your crew, um, especially, you know, your department heads that everyone sort of be on the same page. Yeah. Um, I think movies tend to go astray when people don't understand the, you know, or have different ideas of what the, the tone of the movie is that they're making. And so really understanding, having everyone um, on the team understand the tone that I was going for was essential. But, you know, I think, yes, it definitely, uh, in terms of audience, it's about, you know, the, uh, the sort of the Gen Z mm -hmm. uh, world and people who have social media. But I think, I think that it's, it should be enjoyable for anyone, you know, yeah. for anyone it's the, you know, the themes are universal of like this sort of desire to be seen is a very human desire and um, you know, and, and, and to be validated, to be loved um, and how far, you know, you, someone could go to be seen or to be loved is, is sort of something that we all at any age, sort of desire a hundred percent and it's interesting because you know you're doing press for kind of the theatrical release of this but you know it did the film festivals and everything it was at tiff does it feel kind of a little like you're doing it all over again a little bit with like the press and everything like you did interviews before and you're doing more like what's that like i always thought that was interesting like the film festivals and then the theatrical yeah. component of it yeah i mean that's a great question it's yeah we had we had a bunch of sort of reviews at tiff and then now I love it though. Every, and you know, this is Susie is my, my, my baby, my <laughs> creative child, you know, and this was so, 
you know, it was the thing that I lived, you know, and I still, I'm so excited to be able to share, finally get to share it with the world, this thing that, you know, yes, audiences at the festivals were able to sort of see and love, but I really hope that, you know, and now the, the, you know, the greater the world can sort of get to watch it. And, and um, I really hope the, the response is, is, you know, positive. We we've had a really great run. I feel very fortunate that, you know, people um, have really responded to the film and I want it, you know, I can't wait for the, that to continue. I hope it continues. You know, the movie's got its kind of twist and turns and does an amazing job with that kind of whodunit kind of theme a little bit because everyone's trying to figure out what's going on and everything. And I feel like the movie is dialogue heavy in a lot of ways where you're really interested in these conversations that Susie's having with everyone, all the stakeholders involved. From a director perspective, what are those conversations like with your amazing cast for this movie in regards to the dialogue component of things where like, there's like, there's a lot of conversation in this when you're like an audience member, you're like, wow, like why did that person say that? Like, that was kind of weird. You know what I mean? Like, what are those conversations or are there not as many conversations as we would think about that with the actors? Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's really, it was really important to me that all, all the characters feel lived in yep. that, the all the characters have arcs have, you know, I, I, uh, you know, there, there are a bunch of different really interesting roles in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, not just Susie, um, you know, you've got Jesse and then you've got Sheriff Loggins, you've got, um, Edgar Ken Marino's part, you've got Rachel Sennett, um, Jillian, you've got Ray, Isaac Powell. And I think there, it was really important to me that they all have unique arcs, um, and they all have their own quirks, you know? And I think, that I feel very fortunate in a lot of ways to get the cast that I did because they believed that there was, you know, there was their their roles were were meaty. There was, you know, there were there were there was a journey to go on. Yep. Um, so in terms of conversations, you know, I a lot of it was in the script. I mean, yeah. believe there weren't a whole lot of conversations if if some words felt funky in um or or lines felt funky in my actor's mouths like mm-hmm. we would we could I, I wasn't you know a stickler this isn't Shakespeare um you know we we I wanted to always try and uh have the actors feel like they if they felt weird saying the line with and you know we would make it their own you know so um yeah, but for the most part, you know, what what you see is was very much on the page um and you know then the actors sort of imbued it with their own their own, you know, nuance, their own uh juge. Yeah. But um, but it all it all started with the script for sure. 100% you mentioned in this interview that, you know, Susie is is your baby and I find it interesting because you wrote a direct of this is is like is that like the plan? Like, could you have ever like made this movie just writing it or directing? Like, was that the plan that you were like, I want to, I, I got to write and direct this? Like, I know this character too well. Like, I'm just curious about that. Yeah, you know, well, it's interesting because initially, you know, it started off as a short film that I actually starred in, um, and in a lot of ways, it's sort of the birth of this. Uh, creative baby came from like a you know it started like a role that I wanted to play I was like mm-hmm. what you know it came from not getting role you know when you're you're an actor and you're like oh, I want I want a role like this what role out there like what would I want to pay like my ideal role yeah. and it started like that that was sort of the catalyst for the film and of course um, we make the short and I realized that I just wanted to direct and I didn't want to act in the feature and that's, <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, what a joy, you know, what I'm responding to with this role. My hope is that's, you know, another actor will respond to, you know, it's, it's a great, uh, calling card. I hope, you know, or for an actor, there's 100%. such a nuanced, complicated, interesting, um, you know, in role and and Kiersey, her sort of emotional dexterity was so unbelievable to watch. And in in all the ways, you know, she exceeded my expectations for this character. She blew it out of the park. And every actor really, um, Alex, 
blew me away. I, I was so fortunate with this cast. I got very, very lucky. This is such a brilliantly talented, um, open, kind, just, just a fucking awesome cast. It's an amazing and, cast. Uh, That's it's funny because you know you you see what's out there. You watch trailers, and especially this trailer does a very good job for your film. Does a very good job because you kind of see everyone at some point, and you're kind of like, oh man, like. Wow. And it's like, oh, this person too. And like, oh, Jim Gaffigan. And it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got, I got, it's, that's the way I felt when we were casting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, Meredith Tucker, our incredible casting director yeah. who casts White Lotus and she did eighth mm. grade. She's incredible. And, um, uh, you know, uh, exceeded every expectation. I mean, she, and the fact that, you know, we, we talked and I, you know, I remember I was like, Rachel Sennett would be my dream Jillian, but I don't know if we'll get her. She's, she's so, you know, she's, maybe we'll get her, but I don't know. She's her star is on the rise. And then she said, yeah, you know, we met get this like three and a half hour meeting. And she said, yes. And, um, that was a dream. I felt that way with every, I mean, Alex saying yes, Kiersey was the first person who said yes. It was sort of, um, you know, in a waterfall from there, but it was, um, it was a dream come true really yeah, for, especially for my first feature working with such powerhouse actors. And um, they sort of took what I wanted and elevated it to a whole nother level. hundred percent. And you know, Susie search is going to be at theaters July 28th. So people are going to check that out pretty soon, actually. So thank you so much for your time. It was really great chatting with you. It was so wonderful to chat with you. Thank you so much and for for chatting with me and for spreading the word and um and to be continued, I hope. Absolutely. Your Instagram is kind of the, the go to, right? For people to kind of keep yes. up date with everything. Yes. Yes. Is it just your name? My name. Boring. Sophie Cargo. <laughs> Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turner, youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Sophie Cargman and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.